Today we're going to be discussing what I did in this new experiment and um, how it was supposed to give me some answers to different things. So if you've been following along with stuff that I've done, you know that I've made a lot of changes in my experiments. I've changed things like this, this little switch I had here, which was a light switch, over to a switch like this. But we do a lot of experiments here, and today, with no exception, this is going to be another one. But I want to show this experiment and talk about it a little bit just before we get into this. Okay, what we're showing here is a reactor that I am building. And it will take atmospheric electricity and turn it into regular battery power. And it is mounted to my wall. Uh, you can see that it has room for air there and room for air there. Um, it has a handle on here because, like I said, it's going to have an inside here. And uh, I bolted it down that screw here um, just to keep this door closed because I'm um, not ready to get to the rest of the components but we'll be talking about this experiment in um, future and um, why they haven't done this before because it was always possible for them to do it so again some of these things I do an experiment called puzzles so I take things that they say that is perpetual motion and find out how our technology of today can change things like this into actual functioning things. So I, I take them as puzzles because I be me myself always look at it and go, why haven't they done this before? And I think they have. They just don't want the rest of the public knowing it. So those are the experiments we're going to do, but we're going to go back and talk about the original experiment that I'm working on now. So we're back here running with the original experiment. And as you can see, um, anybody who knows these monitors, that this solar right now, which is put out by this orange cord right here which was an old extension cord and I didn't want to throw it away I wanted to reuse it um, and I put in this new switch so um, it's supposed to protect the lines but uh, I put it on there in case I want to work on the power I want to be able to turn it off without electrocuting myself but as you can see that this is it went down to 7 amps it's providing 7 amps of power which is going into this battery now you can see the double lines up here towards the top this means that this solar is supplying energy to the battery which is charging and then you can go down here and it says charging and to the load this is the load okay now the load that we're using off the battery is right here okay and you can see that we're taking about 135 at the most, maybe 36, 38 watts off that battery at 12 volts. Okay, so this thing goes up to this is plugged in, which is this. And it's actually taking about four to five amps. And... 26 is the highest I see it go up to 26 it's jumping down volts okay which goes directly into this tie grid and gives me about 120 at the highest you see it went down to uh, 14 they went down to 100 so from anywhere from 99 to about 120 watts not volts watts of power is going back into my grid. Now, sometimes the sun does not always cooperate. So, what I did in this experiment is to help it out. So this number is important right now and the battery level. So let's go to the battery level so you can remember 
these amps seven to eight that means the sun is is dipping behind clouds and we know it's putting out about 115 watts of solar but that number which it says battery 12.4 you see it's pretty steady it's not fluctuating like the other two but that means about 12 watts 12 volts 0.4 of volts are going into my no i'm sorry i'm saying this wrong this is where my battery level is. I am at 12.4 volts of power in my battery. Okay, so what's the experiment? Simple. We take this battery jar, which I use as a simulator charger. And we look at here, because you see it's saying zero. We're, and this black cord is coming from my tie grid. So let's see, it says 100 and 21 and this one up here says 107 watts from that black cord right there to this black cord right here you see that says 112 watts are going back into this whole strip right here this one right here is to the other tie grid which is not on it's not even plugged in so we don't have to worry about that so let's go and plug this in and take some of that energy we're producing off of here and as you can see the measurement from the power we're taking off of here is one amp and around 37 volts of power you know they're going to fluctuate a little bit but in shore power, we're taking about 58.5 watts of power from this number right here. So that's about half. Okay, so again, what did it do up here that it says? Now, this was at 12.4. You see that this is now saying 12.6 as my battery level let's go back and look at the wattage and the amps now we're putting in about 11 amps okay and i can control that so if i'm getting very little power like on a rainy day i can take some of the power that i'm producing off of this and put it back into what where is this going right here back into the solar I just attached both those into the solar so this is attached to the solar and the solar is attached to the solar so the majority of the power is coming from the solar as we've seen in the beginning and I just added a little boost to it as this is a solar panel and I can control the amps on this side right here and I can control the voltage right here now as i get better into programming i'll be able to set this up to do this automatically based on how much sunshine is outside and these two levels right here which i'm working on that right now it's slower because i had to learn all these systems because no one would help it out. And trust me, I went to hundreds of people over the internet and they all just simply said no. Don't know why, but I thought these would be interesting experiments to take care of. But I'm getting the sense that they don't want to solve the green energy thing. Okay? Because the whole point is for us to have green energy is to maintain that battery. Okay? Because it's this system in which they created was automatically would take energy from the grid. That's what this symbol above this, that little circle right there. Anyway, but what it does, it, it says bypass when it reads. It'll bypass all this stuff. And all of a sudden, it will take all that energy just from the grid bypassing this and taking any solar to discharge the battery 
and I'm going, well, won't I just do that myself and I can control it in a better manner by doing this and running this into the solar and then I'll know exactly how much electricity that I'm taking from the electricity that I'm producing to the electricity that I'm drawing from the grid and putting it back into the solar so this symbol up here does not trigger and still maintains the battery level that I want to do. Now I got to keep checking this system because I'm doing it manually but the simple fact is now uh, let me go over here and finish this this sentence this is at 12.6 I'm maintaining that that battery so I the first one was 12.4 if you go back and look so again when this drops to 12.4 I can actually turn this up let's do that let, let, let's see that this is at 12.6 let's turn up the amps to around two amps okay and look where we at on the battery level okay let's go back over here look at the wattage and let's look at the amps so again if you go back and just look at the uh the sequence we understand there's going to be more amps there's going to be thing and i can control that so let's turn it up to around three amps there's three amps let's get a good picture of that three amps you see that I am drawing more power out now than I'm producing. So I'm taking 127 watts out of the 103 watts is going back into the grid. But this went up to 15 amps of power. And if we go back here, that's 225 watts coming from the PV and that makes the battery go to 12.8 okay i can also turn this up to produce more power and let's do that because right now this is at a low look at it it's not at 99 and we're going to remember we are at four or something so let's just turn these amps up and we see that we got around six amps we see we got seven amps just around nine amps oh we went to ten on accident but we can leave it there but look at here that's 221 okay what going back here what's confirmed that because this power meter, which is plugged in, is saying that we got 221.9 watts going in. And what are we taking off the grid? 128, which is being used by that. And let's see if we're maintaining the battery. So now the battery is at 12.6 instead of 12.8. Okay? So, again, because I want these batteries to last all through the day, I'm going to turn this down and only put in about, let's see, four something volts around there, which puts me down again, 103. That's what it normally is. It'll drop down, as you can see. So when it settles, it's gonna stay around that 105, around that, around there. You see how it jumps down to 99? And then it jumps back up. So that's the reason why I say those things. So that confirms it. That means I am putting in around 100 volts of, or 100 watts, I don't know why I keep saying volts, 100 watts of power back into my grid. 
and we know that means that's about four amps and 20 25 volts these things right here tell me so much about how much power is actually being produced when we're talking about wattage instead of just seeing what the amps and the volts are okay so it lets me know hey that ain't very many amps to create that right here okay so again we want to turn this down because we want it under that right here so look at that right here see it's three amps we don't have to turn it down by much and we just we're just giving it substitute right now to turn it down as much as possible and the light went out so let's turn it back on 45 volts and I'm right up under an amp I'm still at 12.6 that means it will be dropping from there and I want to go back off the battery that's a hundred and something watts of power and we're doing 11 amps now I dropped down to 10 that's simulated and solar power now I also like turning this down because I don't want to overload the system I just wanted a small boost in case we get poor lighting so I turn this off well, well I'm gonna turn this back up to about one and then I'm just simply going to unplug it come on there he is unplug it I hit the kilowatt button but that's okay uh, let's turn it back to amps there we're back to wattage okay nope we're on the wrong one so let's turn it there now we're back on the original one okay this is off I am creating eight amps just from the solar that's down from the 11 which I want to um, the whole purpose of this whole video is to talk about that so now I'm going over with 8 amps and I'm seeing that the battery is back at 12.4 from draining from there okay and we're putting in 8 amps which here tells me that I'm putting in 8 8 amps and I'm taking four amps off the system just using solar by itself so when all this thing gets hooked up to an actual computer that will monitor the amount of light coming in and um, control this far as putting any energy in versus this energy let's get this back on this energy that's going back into the system Oh, yeah, this is the whole point of me talking about this experiment and see if I can actually get this set up. Now, you see, there's a bunch of wires all over the place and what's name. It's just one big messy experiment. But actually, when I'm satisfied of what the system is supposed to do, I'll be taking a lot of this stuff apart, using these in monitors, putting them in a box and make sure that the computer takes the light measurements that's the hard part about this system which i have to learn especially when i don't know that much about electro uh, electronics and uh, systems like that but i'll learn and it will now turn this up and down this variable power supply to always maintain the batteries so it will always have power on that battery whether the sun is shining or not they're both taking energy from the grid that's the whole point of plugging it into the grid in the in the first place is to maintain these batteries i just wanted to do this through the solar so i can see hey if a, a sun goes behind a cloud this thing would automatically adjust okay 
and when it comes out and it's got full sunshine it would adjust again to not running at all which means that it makes the solar system in its whole entirety even more efficient because it's monitoring the weather according to what it's putting out in po uh, power and then say it's putting out too much power then the system will adjust this power supply to supply less power over here to put back in the grid and that means that we need to actually put more energy in the grid or it will just turn this off which I can do here and I already have one part of that system this timer turns it off before the sun sets so it'll turn that off automatically I don't have to do any hands-on thing with that but I push this button here turning this system off which turns that off which makes that go to zero and then that means the energy going into this is strictly from the sun don't matter where it's at or what it's doing and you can see by the battery level it went to 12.7 not 12.4 so that means I'm I you can tell when it's drawing power okay so again by putting this on a system and monitoring the weather itself I think that this is going to be a more efficient system that's why I'm experimenting with it now but I'm doing this all manually now when I finish that other battery that we discussed earlier in the videos the reactor it's going to take atmospheric electricity and it's going to put it into this system so I can eliminate taking it from the grid and just take that little bitty power that I'm getting from the atmosphere to add into my solar to do the same thing that is what the second experiment is about. And then see how far I can take that. Can I run it off of there totally? Which I doubt, but the whole point is I can subsidize that with this system just like I'm subsidizing it with this system now. So that was the video that I want to update, let you guys know some of the things that I'm working with and I think that's about conclusion on um, this this right here like I said I'm gonna turn this back on just by pushing this battery and I'm gonna go over here that says 8 went down to 7 and as soon as that gets all the way up I see a hundred watts of power and there is up and that's up and the last thing we'll talk about is that this timer, and this is just a uh, light timer, will now manually, I don't know if you can see that or not because it's got a little glare. You see where it says auto and that light is on? Around 6 o'clock this will turn off. That means the sun will still be up and I can get a little bit more power back onto my battery without the sun being down that means it's strictly going to come from the sun but it's going to be very low powered so that is going to turn off dra draining the battery and then the remaining suns down to sundown is going to put a little bit more energy onto the battery when i come down to check it if i don't like where the battery power is then i'm going to take a couple volts and start charging it from there which will still be simulated by the solar and get that battery up over 12 volts but we're going to check it again later not in this video how far this drops down running the system I got from what I'm supplying uh, the system with let's go 141 watts to 139 watts from the PV that's what they call the PV solar panels and it is producing 9 amps at this time all by itself okay so when that drops 
down to one amp, either I'll make a decision to subsidize it or I just leave it alone and just make sure that the system is totally off. But I noticed that the idle, idling, that means this thing right here will consume power. So I'm, I'm going to put at least one amp or just under one amp. You can see this can go under an amp just to give it enough power from this grid, which will be about nine, maybe 10, maybe 24 watts of power at most to make sure that that maintains a battery level that I'm happy with in the morning, okay? Until I get the computer to do it by itself, and who knows, I may not even have the ability to do that. Maybe I can hire somebody to do that, but I've been looking for a long time. But if that's possible to get that done, I won't have to do it manually. But when I finish, all these calculations I'll be able to write that into my system so I can write it into a program which AI can help you out with now I may not be correct and all that but it will give you a step forward uh, on what you should do and how to do it and then I can have somebody look at it and make changes based on that which is more information to help them out on what I'm trying to do because some people don't understand and some people just look at you why do you want to do that it's like these things right here that you buy if you if you go against it it was like well why don't you just buy the system because there's no system out there to do exactly what I'm I wanted to do okay it doesn't look at the sun and says, oh, a cloud. Let's adjust the power settings according to the weather outside. It just doesn't do that. Now, when they do, then I'll buy it. But again, it will be my idea. Lloyd G. Stovall came up with this idea, put it on YouTube, and just maybe they'll adopt this idea instead of saying, because that's, that's the uh, uh, open part of the ideas yeah take that idea and, and use it so I can go buy a system but let's see how long it takes them to make a system that adjust with the weather outside and how much power you're actually putting in from your PVs then if they made a system where you can put large amounts of PVs and it still adjust the power uh, according to that so it doesn't overload the system it means even in low light, you can still have adequate power coming into your system. But they haven't really done that. Now, can you bypass it? Oh yeah, I've seen people on the internet who found a way to just hook up massive amounts of solar. So when it's running in very low light, but enough light to see with your eyes, then it takes that power and starts putting all that solar into that system and then when the sun comes out and it's overloaded or overclocked it turns that and knocks it down so it doesn't hurt your charge controller and yeah i'm still learning about that so i don't know all the names and, and gadgets that they use to do that and they did not mention that in their videos but it lets you know that it's possible and that's one step closer to saying that if they make a tie grid have a monitor instead of you monitoring it saying oh look at the power look how much I'm making which is nice but it should be based on sunshine and weather conditions outside um, and how much electricity you bring in and then monitor the whole system so adding this into a system like this, adding these two things to modern battery, all these things right here, you know, is not impossible for them to do. This system right here is already built into this system right here. That's why I can hook up this cord and this cord in and out of the system because it has this inverter built into this inverter okay so they do have systems that th like this that 
work with your tie grid system. Okay? So that means you can hook it to your tie grid uh, thing. And that was a, a what we call an upgrade to their systems. But those are very expensive systems right now. And I probably will be getting one. But the simple fact is, it should be monitoring the atmosphere and the sunlight and what's coming into the system and making adjustments according to your battery power and what it can put out and what it can't put out and let you know this but the more we go towards ai and things like alexa and stuff like that it's going to start telling you these things so it's just a matter of time I believe but I wanted to put that out to say I suggested it first that way when you people say hey man I came up with this idea and they go sure 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 you did they can go back and look at this video look at the timestamp on there when we discuss things like that and we can say this is when I came up with the idea when did you come up with the idea because again we're always developing things on our needs okay so all this is stuff is based on what i need and i don't want to be going up and down the stairs checking on this all day long and the weather's constantly changing all day long so it would make sense that you have a system that can do that for you all right so this video is long enough uh i'm going to cut out I hope you guys like this video and I'll catch you in the next one.